spite of everything we see or hear going on around it. Because you said it, we believe it. And for about two of us, that settles it. Because you said it, we believe it. Because you said I'm healed, I'm healed. Because you said I'm set free, I'm set free. Because you said it, I believe. Somebody say the word got out. out. The word got out. A crowd gathered, jamming the entrance so no one could get in or out. He was teaching the word. Somebody say teaching the word. Teaching the word. And they brought a paraplegic to him, carried by four men. When they weren't able to get in because of the crowd, they removed part of the roof and then lowered the paraplegic on his stretcher. Impressed by their bold belief, Jesus said to the paraplegic, Son, I forgive your sins. Uh, Jesus said to the paraplegic, Son, I forgive your sins. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody say, Apply, apply. Pressure. pressure. Our text today finds us learning of an account where Jesus is about to teach his disciples yet again, Elder, another lesson. If you know anything about Jesus, he is always filled with lessons. Every situation in your life, beloved, has been a lesson. In case you did not realize it, I'm about to turn to the 38th chapter of my lesson. Come on. Come on, every part of your life, every day, every week of your life, every year of your life has been a lesson. Every experience that you would have gone through, good, bad, or indifferent, has been a lesson. And so Jesus was about to teach his disciples another lesson. He was getting ready to show them who has all power in his hands. He was about to show them who truly has the authority concerning sin. The paraplegic man came, Elder, with an issue 
He came unable to walk for his entire life. And I want you to stick a pin here for a moment because the very first thing Jesus did was he forgave the man's sins. <laughs> oh, Jesus is quiet and glory seekers, but it's okay because I want this to soak like rice. Amen? As a matter of fact, this entire book of Mark is filled with Jesus declaring his authority. I'll prove it. In the book of Mark chapter 1 and 23, he reveals that he had authority over demons. Somebody ought to catch that. He revealed that he had authority over demons. And then jump down to Mark chapter 1 and 29, he healed someone of a physical disease. Jump on down to Mark chapter 1 and 21. He begins to deal with a religious spirit that was so busy teaching the past that they did not realize that their future was right before them. And so here we are in the fourth lesson in this book of chapter Mark. And God, or I should say Jesus rather, is about to teach us who's in control, watch this, of the press. He's about to teach us who is truly in control of the press. I would even venture to say that Jesus applied pressure to what was happening around him. See, because there was a bunch of talk, Sister Renata, that was happening. How dare he forgive this man of his sins? You're not God, but as a matter of fact, I am. I came to do just what I did. So watch this. What was the lesson for us? in 2021 maybe if you would stop defending yourself God can show up God I thank you he wasn't trying to defend himself about being the son of man because he knew that he was and so he applied pressure to let you know that if God be for me I don't care what you're saying around me I don't care what you're saying about me if God be for me who can stand against me can I prophesy to three of you today? Shut up and show up. Mm. Oh, Jesus, help me. How would you stop trying to defend your name? Stop trying to defend your honor? Apply pressure and watch God demonstrate who he is. Mm. I need you to shut up so God can show up. See, we want him to show up, but we are so busy talking. Mm. We want God to show our enemies, but we're so busy talking. I've come with an announcement today. Apply pressure to what you're going through and watch God show up in the middle of this. You got to excuse me. I ain't preached in three weeks, so I'm going to give it everything I got today. I came for broke today. Come on, you got to apply pressure and let the demonstration of who God is speak for your behalf. Speak on your behalf. You got to shut up somebody. Say, I just need to shut up. Come on, that shut up could be in the form of internal suppositions. In other words, your heart is speaking louder than your spirit. Shut your heart up. Quiet your heart down. Settle your spirit. Maybe if you will allow your spirit to be settled here, God can move on your behalf. Somebody say apply pressure. Somebody type apply pressure. Come on, in this text, the Lord is teaching a lesson. You know, he had his disciples for three and a half years. So as he journeyed closer and closer to his death, if you looked at it, the lessons became much more intense. Yeah, as he got closer to destiny, the lessons became more intense. Can I, can I, can I, or can I do it like I want to do it? Can I let you know, the closer you get to destiny, the closer you get to the promises of God over your life, the harder the lessons are. Can I help two or three of you, the closer you get to God performing the word over your life, the harder the lessons are. Could it very well be? that the pressure you've been feeling has been the weight of the assignment. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me preach it. Could it very well be that the pressure you've been feeling has been the weight of the assignment while you've been crediting witches, while you've been crediting warlocks, God sent me here to declare to you it's been the weight of the assignment. It's been the weight. It's been the intensity of the weight of what he has called you to do. Come on, sometimes I woke up yesterday. Come on, I had to cut my phone off because my head was hurting so bad. And I said, now God, I had migraines in over a year. 
Somebody caught it. Yeah. It's been about a year now since I had an intense migraine. And here it is on the eve of preaching this message, this intense, I couldn't even function. And the Holy Ghost said, it's the weight of your assignment. Mm -hmm. I've come to let you know the pressure that's being applied. God, why can't I get a break? Why does it seem like everything happening from the north to the south to the east and the west in my life? When I fix one thing, here comes 12 others. God says, the closer you get to what I've been calling you to do, the fullness, the full measure of your gift, you got to apply pressure. Because pressure, the old folks say, will make a pipe burst. And God has let me here today to tell you the pipe is about to burst. Because the pressures are being applied to what he's called you to do. It's about to tie in together. What you talking about? I'm about to tie it in together right here. So here is the story of this paralyzed man. If you know anything about a paraplegic, that's someone, God, I feel him, that has lost the ability to move the lower parts of their body. Right. That's a paraplegic. In other words, they're paralyzed from the waist down, right? They're unable to walk, hence why he had to have people carry him. Right. Oh, you're looking at me. But there had to be, for somebody who could not walk, there had to be some sort of determination, some sort of will, some sort of ambition. There was something in this paralyzed man that said, I need to get to Jesus. I heard he was in town, and I got to get to where he is. Ah, let me make it 2021. Y'all got to stop letting Lottie Dottie and everybody distract you from getting to the house of the Lord. I'm going to preach it in here. You got to stop allowing every situation. Come on, this man could not walk. And so what he did, he said, bro, you got to carry me. If I got to press to get in his presence, if I got to crawl and get there, if you got to tote me there, if you got to drag me there, I got to get to where the presence is. And then I began to, to research a paraplegic. And if you didn't know, a paraplegic has constant pain. So I said, now hold on. You can't feel it, but you're still in pain. Maybe you caught that? Okay. At least I have some help. You, you can't feel it, but you're still in pain. Could you imagine? I can't walk, but I can't feel the lower parts of my body, but yet I'm still in pain. There had to be some determination in the, in the spirit or in the root of this man that said, I got to. There was some, I heard he was in town. I heard what he did last year. Your, your Jesus. I heard what he did in the last town he was in. Brother Raphael, I heard what he did in the last city he was in. I heard about a man named Jesus. And if he is in my neighborhood, I don't care how much pain I'm in. I got to get there. And I've come to announce to three of you today, get to where the presence is. The problem is, we shout that we're in pain, and then we retreat. No, baby, you got to get in his presence. This is not the hour of retreat nor surrender. Soldiers don't run away. Soldiers run to the battle. I need you to pick up your swords, and I need you to press, because if that's where Jesus is, I got to get there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a press. It's a press. Come on, somebody say, it's a press. It's a press I got to get there. I got to get, if it's on Facebook, I got to I got to log in and don't let nobody distract me. If I got to get to the building, I'm getting there. I'm not going to let nobody distract me from getting to the presence of God. If it's your children, you need to put your children in order. Baby, go take a nap or something, but I got to get to the presence of God. So this man called up his homeboys. I feel like in 2021, he FaceTimed them. He texted them and said, bro, what you doing? I need you. Can I put a pin in it right here? You need to surround yourself in this season with people that's going to help you get to the presence of God. If you are 
connected to folks that agree with your pain and agree with your condition. You need to let it go, but you need to surround yourself. I believe these men were some intercessors. You need to surround yourself with some prayer warriors and some folk that know how to get to God. Don't you dare or surround yourself with people that are pity partying you. The devil is a liar. You are too close to destiny. You're too close. You're too close. You're too close. Yeah, I like that. Come on up. You're too close. You're too close, beloved. How dare you get here and you allow folks to distract you. This is not the season to be distracted. You need to get yourself to an intercessor. Watch guard now. So there was a determination in this man. Ah, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. There was a determination in him to get to Jesus. Watch this. But when he shows up, the place where Jesus was was crowded. Nine out of ten of y'all would have gone back home. You know what that's equal to? We come to the service and the prophet or the man of God and the woman of God gives everybody a word but you. And so you get discouraged and you stop coming. I know I'm talking, I'm no, I know I'm telling the truth. We, we, we come to the service and he got a word for everybody. Bettina get a word, Raphael get a word, and I'm sitting here, Lord, come to me next, Jesus, I am desperately needing for a word, and he step over you, and you go to Ingrid, come on, and you go to the next somebody, what am I trying to say, if the prophet have a word for you or not, the word is the word, come on, come on, you still got to push, and you still got to press, the song says if I can just press in his presence, you got to apply pressure, you got to apply pressure, watch this, and every last one of us have received news of what God wants to do in our life. So this man with his determination, I'm sure he was like, okay, well maybe I got to go home, but watch this. He had them same intercessor friends that said, oh, no, no, no. You got to be healed. You got to be whole. You got to be delivered. So we're going to do whatever is necessary. Come on, somebody declare by any means necessary. I got to get you to Jesus. And see, that's the good thing about having folk in your life that knows what you need when you need it. Come on, you better stop hanging around chickens and be an eagle. You better you better rise up and jump to the next level. Because you got some friends that would have said, baby, let's go home. Let's go to the cheesecake factory. Because Jesus is crowded. But somebody, have you ever felt like, ah, I feel like preaching. Have you ever felt like, come on, that you've gone to God and you felt like he's been too busy but baby he's never too busy he is never too busy to hear your heart's cry he is never too busy come on somebody he is never too busy to hear from his daughter to hear from his sons watch this so the first objective was to surround yourself with people that's going to get you to Jesus. People that's going to make you press and not bow. Right. Yeah. Boy, good. Oh, I got to see it one more time. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. the guitar is missed it. <laughs> People that will make you press and not bow. You don't got to hear the Holy Ghost today. Because there are some people in your life who want you to bow. Mm -hmm. You better oh, pray the You better pray. I, I feel the Holy Ghost say, yeah. there's some folk in your life wishing that you would just bow. Come on, it's a Job's wife syndrome. Why don't you just curse God and die? Baby, I'm sick of you. Come on, I'm sick of you in this state. I know you've been hurting. I'm sick of you in this. You can just go ahead and curse God and the suffering will end. But baby, you need to find yourself some people that will encourage you and realize that it's in the press that God delivers. It's in the press that God God makes a way out of nowhere. Watch this. Because now as I read the text a little further, the first thing Jesus did was forgive the man. Now, sir, I didn't come here for you to forgive me. I can't walk. You talk but forgive my sins. I want you to heal me. And see what God 
Alice Hikanan Sai. What God has told me to tell this people today. Come on, you don't control the press. It's not in your control because this is what we do. If I press the church this week, then maybe God will bless my family. Beloved, God is not a manipulator. You can't control God. Baby, because sometimes you will press the church and you get worse. I know I'm telling the truth up in this house today. Sometimes you, you give your whole offering and, and God and stuff still break out in your life. I know I'm talking the truth. Sometimes we press and things happen to you don't control So what you mean you forgive my sins? I can't walk. And God said, what if the second objective for today, he said, what if you applying pressure doesn't change your physical condition, but it addresses your spiritual location? Mm. <laughs> Y'all got to help me right here. In other words, this man was paralyzed and God touched his spiritual condition first. This is what excites you like you did me. Come on, it, 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 it. he addressed his spiritual first. The Bible says man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart and see he looks his heart and he saw above you being paralyzed your heart is sick come on, above you having cancer your heart is sick above you having diabetes your heart is sick and needs to be forgiven and so he addresses his spiritual location first I have a question for glory seekers what if he needs you to press and leaves you right in the condition you're in. <laughs> what if you don't miss no service? What if you miss no prayer, no Bible study? What if you miss nothing the church has? What if you empty your savings and give it to the church? And God still leaves you in that condition, but your heart is healed. Is it well? Come on, somebody. I told y'all, and I meant that thing. Coming into 2021, I said, I'm fighting for peace. Y'all can have the extra stuff. I just want the peace of God. And by any means necessary, I'm going to fight for the peace. What was I declaring? I was declaring that my spiritual location was far more greater than my natural disposition. You can leave me in the trial, but give me peace, God help me. You can leave me in the situation, but let your joy be present. You can leave me right here in the path of righteousness, but don't let me walk by myself. You can have the physical location, but God, give me peace. Give me peace that surpasses human understanding. What if he doesn't the money, but he deals with your suicide. What if he does it? Come on, somebody give you the house, but he deals with your way with children. What if he doesn't change your condition, but he changes your mind? God wants to know, is it well? Yeah. See, because we try to press for the things that we can touch, but the press has more to do with internal than it does I've come to two of you today. The pressure that you've been in, you got to apply pressure to what you've been facing. What if he doesn't give you the spouse you want so badly, but he gives you the peace that you need so badly? Is it well? Yeah, we quote that hymn, but do we really mean it? It's well, whatever, my lot. And then when the whatever happened, you ready to fall out? You ready to break up the whole church because you did not get what you wanted? But if you press, what if the press had more to do with your heart? Then it does what you can touch. Turn to somebody and say, we can't manipulate God. Stop trying to manipulate God. Watch this. And after now, he forgives this man of his sins. We didn't read it. You can do that in your spare time. We didn't read it. But in your spare time, you can address that. Because the next thing happens, the religious people begin to come back with Jesus. Ah, Nabako. In Sandy Bahoya, 
Yeah, the religious people begin to debate with Jesus about the fact that he thinks he can forgive the man's sin. I've been coming here today to tell somebody there is an argument taking place over should you forgive her sins or not. I know she was a hoe. Lord, I can say that in church. I know he was a hoe, but the Lord sent me here today to let you know that there are some arguments taking place in the spirit over the fact that you were once a hoe, but now you healed. Come on, somebody. You were once a hoe, but now you hold. God, I thank you. You were once suicidal, but now you're whole. You were once depressed, but now you're whole. There is a religious system that's mad over the fact that you're not the favorite, and God still chose you, and you're not the liked one, but God still uses you. You're not the chosen one. You're not the Joseph, but God still chooses to use you. They're upset. The religious systems are upset, Elder. Uh, they're upset. They're upset, Sister Renata, because how dare you call yourself a woman of God? How dare you call yourself a man of God? And Jesus got delivered to say her sins are forgiven? What kind of foolishness is happening right before our eyes? But if you know anything about God, when you apply pressure, God will astound principalities, and powers and wicked folk and religious folk right before your eyes. Come on. He will let that religious church mother know, baby. Baby, you think you got oil on you, but the oil is on her. God, I thank you. He will astound principalities and powers. That's his job. That's why he's God. What if the applied pressure unleashes the authority of God. It's releasing the authority of God over what you're going through. Did you hear the Holy Ghost? See, we think, Elder, we think this paraplegic man just knew he was about to walk up and watch this. The miracle did happen. Oh, that's the good news. But that ain't why he pressed. Oh, boy. Oh, he, come on, he still got healed. Don't, don't miss that part. Of, that, was the, that was the good news. He still got healed because the Bible declares, I think it's in verse 7 or 8, that he picked up his mat and he walked. The man that could not walk a day in his life, he began to walk and watch this. That was in the miracle. Folks out. I want to help the church out. The miracle, my God, today, that was in the miracle. The miracle was in the fact that God dealt with his spiritual location. I come to tell three of you right there on Facebook land that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming to deal with your spiritual location. And anything else is a bonus. God, I thank you for the bonus. But Father, deal with my spiritual location. Deal with this unrenewed mind. Deal with this flesh that can't seem to get it together. Deal with this heart that tries to be renewed. Deal with this mind that's always going contrary. God is coming to deal with your spiritual location. And that's the miracle. This, you know why it's the miracle? Because before then, you could not get your sins forgiven. Boy, I don't know if y'all caught that. I, 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 before this moment, before Jesus came on the scene, you could, you, if you sinned, you died. We just learned this in Bible study. Come on, before Jesus came, come on, we give you the soul that sinned had to die. Watch this. But God came in this parable to let the paraplegic know, I could deal with your natural issue, but I want to deal with that heart. And I've come to tell glory seekers, as Elder alluded to last week, baby, we're on a journey. And in the next 12 months, God is going to deal with this house and what's not like him will be prone to any what's not like him has to get out and what does not bring glory God. what's just in it for fame or fortune and recognition is going to have to flee
me because God has sent me as an ambassador of heaven to deal with spiritual locations. And if there is one thing I've learned, when you start dealing with folks' mind, oh, they get mad. When you start dealing with folks' heart, they get upset. But beloved of God in Christ, we won't be like the paraplegic. No, baby. We're going to get our heart right. Watch this. Apply pressure. Apply pressure. Apply pressure. Get you into his presence. Deborah, you heard that? Come on, Mitzi, you heard that? Apply pressure. Get you into his presence. Minister Shanique, you caught that? Now, here's my third objective so we can get on out of here. Hmm. The man was paraplegic, paralyzed, could not walk. He pressed through the crowd. He was lowered in through the roof. Jesus forgives his sins. The religious people get upset. Jesus does it anyway. Forgives the sins and heals the man. Why is that so important? Because the objective of the press, the objective of the press is for God to be glorified. Malcolm, this was for God to be glorified. He dealt with the physical location, uh, the, the spiritual location. He dealt with the, men, the, the, the physical, sorry, he dealt with the spiritual first, the physical second, but in the end, Pinders, this thing was for God to be glorified. That's right, that's right. This wasn't meant to kill you, Elder. Oh, me, me, this wasn't meant to kill you. This was meant for God to be glorified, man. Sister Renata, if it was meant for God to be glorified, come on, yo, it was meant to, that in the end you lift your hands and say, this thing was for God. Come on, Minister Shanique said it so well a few weeks ago. She said at the end of this, we gotta have a book God testimony. This thing is so that you can open your big mouth and declare that nobody did astound principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places, Raphael. It was to let them know that it was God all along. It was God in the beginning and it will be God in the end. It was God. I feel like preaching. It was God when you started out. It was God in the middle and it will be God in the end. I need three of you to jump to your feet and declare, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God, God, throw your hands up and receive the book God in your life. There is about to be a testimony. There's about to be a testimony that had it not been for the Lord who was on my side. You're about to walk into a season. Some of you are hours away from walking into your book, God. I need you to do this with me. Take one step forward. I'm in my book, God, season. And God will be glorified. And God will be lifted high. And God will be exalted. I've been applying pressure. Somebody say apply pressure. And here comes Jesus in verse number eight. Well, just so it's clear. I don't think y'all caught it. Just so it's clear that I am the son of man and authorized to do either or both. You're questioning me over how I can forgive his sins and not heal him. And since there is a question, let me clarify. And I've been sick here today to tell you, Mitzi, God is getting ready to clarify on your behalf what he can do 
you. Hallelujah, Peter called. God is getting ready. I hear the Holy Ghost say, I'm clearing your name. I'm, ta -ta -ta -ta. I'm clearing your name because the pressure brought you to your knees and you've been giving me glory. So I'm getting ready to clear your name. I'm getting ready to clear your name. I'm getting ready to clear your name. Y'all got to receive it. I'm about to be God in your life. I'm about to be Chandra. I'm about to be Waymaker. Rafa. Elion. Yahweh. I am the Son of Man. I can forgive your sins. And I can give you the miracle that you've been waiting on, Renata. Ah, because you've been applying pressure. Watch this. He told the man, get up, pick up your bed, and go home. And the man did it. He got up, he grabbed his stretcher, and he walked out with everybody watching him. I said everybody was watching. I said everybody was watching that he was made whole. Somebody ought to receive it. Everybody was watching that he was made whole. The Bible says they rubbed their eyes because they were stunned. That's why I had to read the message Bible. They rubbed their eyes and they were stunned. We've never seen anything like this. I need y'all to receive that. Mm. Beloved, what God is going to do for you, man. Mm. Your people are going to say, I ain't never. I heard that. Hallelujah. Somebody help me praise him right there. Ah, we ain't never seen. Shanique, we ain't never seen nothing like this. Come on, Deacon Kai. We ain't never seen anything like it. Come on, Deborah. We ain't never, ever, 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 ever. This next move of God, it's not just unprecedented, but it's not been heard of. We ain't never so That's why the pressure of life seems to weigh you down. Because this next thing that's about to be birthed and about to come through, we ain't never seen. I ain't scared of no devil. I ain't a couple Sunday. I'm not scared of no devil. No if, no pimp. I ain't scared. I'm going to believe God at the end of the day and because I believe God I know he's going to do it we ain't never ever seen anything like this come on and clap your hands and say apply pressure apply pressure apply it apply pressure apply pressure I anoint you today in the realm of the spirit apply pressure declare it. I'm applying pressure. I'm applying pressure. I'm applying pressure. Come on, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. We ain't now declare glory seekers. We ain't, we thought we saw God move before, but we ain't never seen this one. I believe. Come on, in the next 90 days, I believe God so much. I believe we're getting ready to hear cancer dry up. We're getting Somebody's soul is about to be saved. And I'm talking about for real. I ain't talking about no church saved. I believe some soul is about to be saved. Anybody but anybody got bold faith. Anybody have faith that's so bold. I believe some crack house is about to lose its business. I believe some whole house is about to lose its business. I believe God so much that I believe you will walk in here one way and leave a different way. I believe him. That much the miracles and the signs and wonders that are getting ready to be wrought in this house. Eyes haven't seen it, ears haven't heard it, neither has it entered into the hearts of man. That which God has prepared. I believe that the next time you go to the doctor, come on, we're getting ready to see a testimony. Come on, Miss Carla. Come on, Sister Carla. I believe.
believe that really soon we're getting ready to see a testimony of the goodness of God. Shall we not pursue it? Shall we not overtake? Shall we not by any means possess all? I believe in I believe in me, I believe in I believe in I believe that some surgeries won't even be necessary. Y'all got to excuse me. I believe that the next time we go to the doctors, I believe, God, that we're about to astound the schooling system. They're trying to label your children, but the devil is a liar. Help me declare, I believe, God, by any means necessary. You believe, God. You believe him. Come on, clap your hands and say, I believe it. Clap your hands and say, I believe it. I, 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 I believe the Father. And so the man came in one way. He came in one way. He came in one way. But the Bible declares he had a double miracle. Yeah, 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 yeah. had a double miracle. He did not come there for his sins to be forgiven. He came there to walk. And not only did he walk, he left whole for real. He was whole body, soul, and spirit was whole. Y'all know these last two weeks I've been doing my one-on-ones with the membership. And one of the members said, Apostle, if there was one thing I have noticed about this ministry, you focus on healing, on wholeness, and on unity. And I wanted to jump to the computer screen because I've never thought about it like that. You got to be healed. You have to be whole in order to be unified. God wants to heal us. He wants to make us whole in order for us to be unified. We've been trying to unify the body of Christ with a bunch of broken people. We've been trying to unify the church of the living God with everybody broken. The way to be unified is to first be healed. And so the man left with a double miracle. I prophesy to everyone under the sound of my voice, God is getting ready to drop a double miracle in your life. In the Pinder family, in the Roll family, in my mom's house, in Raphael and sister's family, come on, in Sister Renata, Megan, Greg, Dwayne, he's getting ready to drop double. Come on, somebody say hashtag double, double, double. It's happening to my internal, my inward part, but God is also releasing a miracle on my outward. Come on, he's dead. Come on, if I be a man of God, oh, I can't forget my house. A double miracle in the other's house, excuse me. Come on, sorry, I got to go right there in my house, double. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the double. Somebody lift your hands and declare, God, I thank you for the double. In the name of Jesus, body, soul, spirit. Every time somebody asks me to pray concerning healing, I always tell God, we can do this sick. We simply prefer not to. I will preach if, 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 God forbid, if I was diagnosed with cancer, I would probably still preach on my dying day. But I would prefer not to. We will be able to do more for the kingdom without these weight of sickness. Am I the only person that believes that? We, we will be able to do more for your father if, if, if we didn't have to fight for what our flesh experiences. So father, heal me. Body, soul, and spirit. I declare that we're about to see some paraplegics in the spirit world. 
You've been lame for too long. Mando Toto. You've been lame for too long. You've been sitting there lame. The pressures of life. Come on, it, it cut off your circulation and the lower parts of your body and the spirit. You can't walk. But I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. In the name of Jesus. Get up from there and walk. Me. Oh. Anybody believe God like that? Amen. Anybody believe God like that? Can you anybody believe God like that? Can you anybody believe God that way? Get up and walk. Come on. Drop it in the comment section. Get up and walk. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, be made whole. Body, soul, and spirit. Lift your hands. He's doing it right now. Come on, right there in your virtual space. Lift your hands to heaven. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. Come on, Sister Nicola. He's doing it for you right now. Come on, Sister Nicola. He's doing it for you right now. He's healing your mind. Is it okay that God heals your body, your soul first? Is it okay that God heals your heart, Mia? Is it okay the Frank's family if God heals your heart? Come on, Come on, Malcolm. Is it okay if God heals the hurt in the heart? Hallelujah. If your situations don't change, is it alright if God heals that heart? Is it okay if he gives you peace that surpasses all understanding? Is it okay if he gives you joy unspeakable and full of glory? Is it alright if he heals your heart? Somebody throw your hands up and say, God, I want to be healed. I want to be healed. I want to be healed. So, Father, we thank you. 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 Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's see, he's doing it right now. He's doing it right now, right where you are. He's doing that thing for you. Hallelujah. Come on, minister to the Lord. Love. He's doing it right now. He's doing it. I believe God. I believe. I believe God. I believe. He's doing it. Thank you for the healing. Healing, 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 healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we receive the healing of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Woo! Woo! He's sweeping in the room. He's sweeping in the room, Deborah. He's sweeping in the room. He's sweeping. He's sweeping in the room.